Still questions though surrounding this vaccine and also where we stand in the pandemic. So as we do every Friday, I want to bring in our medical expert, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health. Good morning, Dr. Winter. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, so yesterday I spent a fair amount of time watching that panel, and I will say the doctors brought up a lot of great questions, a lot about the potential side effects, but ultimately, overwhelmingly, they felt like the risks were worth the rewards here. How confident should the public be in their decision? Well, Mark, they did 44,000 trials in this vaccine. I mean, that's a lot of folks, and they found very minimal side effects. Now, five or 10% of folks got a sore arm. Okay, you get that from a flu shot. About 2%, they also had fever and aching for a day or two, but then they got well, and then they are protected. So some of those effects, fine. The major side effects we were worried about, we haven't seen that. Now, they haven't tested everybody, so young kids, folks with highly allergic symptoms, I mean, that's a problem they found over in England. If you are highly allergic to lots of things, maybe you ought to step back a minute. Pregnant folks, we're not sure about them yet. But the bulk of people, yes, it should be very safe and very important that we get this vaccine. Yeah, they talked about the potential risks to folks under the age of 18, pregnant mothers, as you mentioned, and also uh, Native American populations, other populations they weren't able to study. But I do want to get a graphic up of some of those side effects so people can see them. It, it really seemed, though, listening to that conversation, that this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see with pretty much any vaccination, right? Yeah, that's true. And actually, it's not a bad sign. If you get a, a, a shot from an antigen, which is what a vaccine is, and your body reacts to it, that means your immune system is recognizing that as something foreign, doesn't belong in your body. They're attacking it to a minor degree in your arm, but they're ready in a major degree if you actually get, come in contact with the virus. So it's actually a sign the vaccine is working, Mark. Reading about the ramp up for this and just how amazing the breathtaking speed was they were able to develop these vaccines. I think something we forget to think about is also the distribution plan, the logistics. It really seems like this is just a, you've got UPS and FedEx working to get this out, hospitals preparing. This is a monumental effort. Yeah, the same we've experienced had a better Scott and White Health. So how are you going to you get all these vaccines? What are you going to do? We're actually having centers where you're going to go to get the vaccine, drive through centers, some places, some folks you'll be walk in, but we're not going to distribute to all the clinics right now. They'll eventually get that also. But right now from the start, we want to centralize so we can actually get this distributed very, very quickly. It takes a lot of work, but we're ready at Bader Scott and White Health. Sounds like the other systems in this area also are very ready. We've run a number of polls on WFAA about folks, how comfortable they are with the vaccine, if they would take it or not. But the science on this seems clear as it does with COVID. How, how much are you worried that not enough people will get vaccinated to get us to the herd immunity that uh, epidemiologists have talked about? Yeah, I'm very concerned about that, uh, Mark. You know, it's interesting, two statistics. So America has 4% of the world's population but America has 20% of the COVID-19 deaths in the world. Now, why is that? We think of these false beliefs that uh, vaccines don't work. Some people think masks aren't important, that they don't work, that you could take vitamins or some unproven prescription drugs that will help protect you, prevent you, these conspiracy theories. We gotta get past that because this pandemic is not gonna go away until we get a lot of people vaccinated and are infected. We wanna go the vaccine way, it's a lot safer. Some folks aren't doing well when they get the virus themselves. I want to talk about frontline health care workers because they are going to be the first to get the vaccines in the state of Texas and across the country. And I know for them it has been a long slog over the past nine months or so. Uh, how confident should they be that, hey, once they get this, uh, we will maybe slowly start to turn this tide? Well, we think so. Uh, that's is important. Now, we're taking some extra steps also because we're actually staggering our crews. If there are 10 nurses in one unit, we're going to have the couple of them come in at a time, stagger them over several days. So if they get that fatigue or the sore muscle for a day or two, they can still not wipe out the whole floor of, of nurses there. So we're careful how we're giving this, but we're very encouraged that if enough folks get the vaccine, we can get rid of this pandemic. We're convinced that we don't vaccinate a lot of people. And as you said, 70% of the population needs to build up antibodies. The, the virus will continue to go around the world for several years like you did back in the 1917, 1918 epidemic. Hmm. Well, certainly some reason for some cautious optimism today. Dr. David Winter, thank you for joining us. Hmm. You bet, uh, thank you, Mark.